Hello my friends, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're all having a great day. This is going to be my follow-up video in my question and answer hair care video. I talked about some treatments that I do on my own hair and I am going to share them with you. Now remember, you do not have to do what I do. You do not have to use the exact same products as I am using. This is just to give you an idea, but, but there are some key players here that you will have to go ahead and get and give it a try. Now there are no guarantees here, but I am just telling you the things that I use that I really do think contribute to my scalp health and my hair health. Now the hair outside of our head is dead, but that does not mean it has to look fried. If we take some time and we treat it with some of the things that I talked about in my previous video and again today. Now, this is going to be in two parts. I'm going to first address the scalp and then we are going to work on the strands. I'm also going to stress again that a lot of people will say, I don't have time for that. If you don't have time for it, then you don't have time for it. But if you want something in life, whether it's good hair or you want a really clean house or you want a clean car, you want a really good job, you have to put effort into that. If you don't, you're not going to succeed. There's not going to be positive results. So it's the same for your hair. Now, a lot of people, I wash my hair daily. The only time I don't wash my hair daily is if we are not gonna be going anywhere. I am an exerciser, which means I sweat a lot. I am a menopausal woman, so I also have night sweats. For me, I don't like to smell my own hair. And using a dry shampoo, which I did not mention in my video, if I am to use a dry shampoo, it's the it's a 10 because it's clear, it doesn't have a powdery um, feel to it, and it also leaves your hair with an incredible shine. I find that some dry, dry sh shampoos, they dull your hair, and if you already have dry hair, that's gonna make it look even drier. So this is the only shampoo that I really, dry shampoo, that I really do like. So um, I'm not one to use that. I use that actually for volume sometimes or texturizing my hair. But if I, you know, I'm staying home and I can still smell my own hair, I might put that in there and it gets the job done. But then I just smell like that. So um, for me, washing my hair is essential. And I also feel that with all the products that we are using on our scalp, not just our hair, but on our scalp with the dry shampoos, you have to remember some people only wash their hair a couple times a week. Some people wash their hair once a week. And I have heard people say this, that exercise a lot, that are in their menopause years. And that is baffling to me, my friends, baffling. But to each his or her own. I'm not saying any way is right, I'm saying what works for me. And I do not have, a lot of people think, if, oh, if I wash my hair too much, it's gonna just ruin my hair. It really doesn't ruin my hair. I don't use sulfate products on my hair. So if you're not using um, detergents on your hair, just like your skin, it's not really going to affect it. So I always use the best shampoos and conditioners, and I mentioned all of my favorite masks. So again, scalp health is very, very important. You would not leave your makeup on your face for three days and just keep going. You wouldn't leave your makeup on your face for a week. What would happen if we just kept piling makeup on our face? Your scalp is part of your body, it is part of your skin. It really is part of the body. So think of it that way. If you are wearing your makeup and the next day you get up and you say, well, I'm just gonna put some more makeup on and you go ahead and you do that. And then the next day you wake up and you say, I'm just gonna put some more makeup on. Think dry shampoo, styling products, dry shampoo, styling products, and more dry shampoo. Okay, so think about your face, that your scalp that way, the same way you would your face. Your face would start to react. Your face, your skin would not look good if you were not treating it, cleaning it. So that's how I look at the scalp. It's no different than my face or my body. It needs to be exfoliated, it needs to be cared for, it needs to be loved, it needs to be cleansed. So that is my philosophy on scalp health and good hair. Okay, okay. so we are going to get started. And first I'm going to talk about scalp health. 
So I'm going to do a scalp treatment today and I thought, well, I'll just do it right on camera. Today is Monday. It is my cleaning day. So this is what I do every single morning minus the camera and lights. The sun kept going behind the clouds, so I had to turn the lights on. I prefer the natural lighting, but we must do what we must do. So anyway, um, it is Monday, it's my cleaning day. So this is how I find the time to do it on my cleaning day. I know that I'm not going to be go going anywhere and I know that it doesn't matter what I look like while I'm cleaning. So first thing in the morning, I put my scalp treatments on and then I put a, another treatment on my strands and I do this once a week, every single Monday. It takes me about 15 minutes max to get it all on my hair, get it tied up, and get my little plastic cap on my head. And Lou is usually out golfing, so I don't need to worry about what I look like for him. Although, I will say, Lou does not care. He does not care. I don't know what I would do if I had a man that expected me to look like, he expected me to be, you know, all dialed up every single minute of the day. I don't know how I would survive that. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, so first gonna... we're going to start with the things you're going to need. You will need a jar. I just take an empty mask and clean it out. And this is what I use for the uh, oil combination that I make up for my strands. You will need a little bowl or you can use a jar and save this. I like to make it up fresh every single time I do it. So you will need a bowl, a little tiny bowl. You will need either a dropper and, and everything, everything I share with you today, I will list and link below so you can go and have a look. You will need a brush of some sort. This is for applying color to the scalp, which you can find at Sally's, very inexpensive. And then a dropper, which you can use a dropper, an old dropper from one of your skincare serums, or you can go ahead and buy, I don't know, here it is. You can buy a little bottle. This is from Sprouts. This is too small. I think you would need the next size up, but they are dropper bottles. And then you can just make your oil and keep it in there. But I think um, if you're somebody with short hair, this size bottle might work for you. But if you have long hair, this size bottle is, you, you're going to be driving yourself nuts. Okay. Filling it up. Or if you want, you can go ahead and use a color applicator and put your oil in here and then apply it just like color. But you may over apply if you use something like this. So whatever works for you, I've done them all. It just all depends on what you like and what is easiest for you. So the first one, I am going to use a brush and the bowl. So you will also need some oils. Now for your scalp, you will need some castor oil and this is the black castor oil. If you don't like castor oil because it is kind of thick and it's hard to work with, if you don't like it, I would suggest for this part, macadamia nut oil, or if you're somebody who is really having a problem with your hair falling out or thinning, and you're trying to block the DHT, you may want to go with pumpkin seed oil. This I, brand here has a pumpkin seed oil. I've used it in the past and I really like it. I'm just out of the pumpkin seed oil, but pumpkin seed oil is known to block DHT if you wanted to go the natural route because there's also many shampoos on the market, many oils and serums on the market that you can also use. But I'm going a natural route today because this is what I use. Many, many, many years ago when I started, I introduced to you that I use a lot of essential oils and carrier oils. I kind of did all the talking about it that I possibly could do back then, so I kind of got away from it. And people have a very strong opinion of essential oils so keep that in mind as well if you don't like essential oils you can leave that part out of the formulas okay so anyway I am going to use on my scalp the castor oil for the strands you are going to need a couple of different oils you can pick and choose what you use but I think you should try this formula just a couple of times you can buy small bottles of oil and try it and see if you like it and that's another thing. Work with the oils and see which one your hair responds to. Because if I were to use the first oil I'm going to share with you by itself, it doesn't work for me. And that's coconut oil. This is an MCT oil. So you will need an MCT oil or coconut oil. It is totally up to you. And this is for the strands. You will also need a macadamia nut oil. All of these oils have their own essential fatty acids to them, vitamins and nutrients. You will need jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is so wonderful, my friends. 
and you will also need some sweet almond oil and that is for the strand mixture again pick and choose the oil you like but like i said you might want to just give it a try all right before we move on to the scalp treatment i wanted to just talk to you about dandruff and flaking now a lot of people may think they have dandruff and what they actually have is just a dry scalp or product buildup and you're not really getting all of that product off so again think suffocation to the hair follicles that is going to prevent your hair from being the healthiest it can be because your scalp is not super healthy all right so now if you are someone that has a lot of flaking on your scalp there are two things that i would suggest you do along with the treatment that I'm going to share. I think that you may want to try a clarifying shampoo. Now, a lot of people, they get really afraid of clar clarifying shampoos because they think, oh, that's gonna strip my color. May be true if you do it too close to your color. Color fades no matter what, but it is true if you use um, a clarifying shampoo, especially within the first 48 hours, you may, you know, fade a little of your color, color off but we're not using this on the strands. We are only gonna use this on our scalp. So wet your head in the shower and then just take the clarifying shampoo on your fingertips and just massage it all over the scalp and just work it into the scalp area. Don't run it through the strands of your head, okay? You wanna just use this on the scalp and then just let it sit there for a minute or two and rinse it out. See if that helps you with the buildup on your scalp. And you might want to do that just before you do this scalp treatment, okay? Another thing, if you have a super itchy scalp and it's always flaking on you and if you're using dandruff shampoos, you've tried everything, try a little bit of aloe vera gel. It may help you. And all you want to do with this, you can pour some of this in a little bowl and use a dropper and just take it in the dropper and go along your part and then just massage the aloe vera all over your scalp and leave it on there. You can even leave it on overnight or just leave it on about 20 minutes before you're gonna shampoo. If it doesn't interfere with your styling, just leave it on and go. It's like it's a treatment. For your all day hair if it doesn't interfere with your style but give the aloe vera a try if you are someone who's really suffering with a dry itchy scalp and you've tried everything else you may find this works for you and you may want to instead of using those harsh dandruff shampoos you may want to try a clarifying shampoo just a little bit on the scalp give it a couple times and see if it helps you with your flakiness. Now Lou has a dry scalp. He does not have dandruff, but his scalp will start to flake from time to time. And he's doing these and they do help my friends. They really, really do. Okay. So give those two things a try and the clarifying shampoo, make sure you do it before our scalp treatment. Okay, so now, so for the scalp, we're going to need our bowl. We'll need an applicator and we're going to need our castor oil. And if you don't like castor oil, macadamia nut oil, or if you're somebody who's really struggling with the loss of hair or thinning, pumpkin seed oil, okay? You so, are going to need two essential oils. The first one being rosemary and rosemary helps to promote hair growth, but it also reduces hair loss. And then the second one is geranium. Geranium helps to boost circulation and it also hydrates. So these two essential oils I use in my skin. And I'm going to say proceed with caution. If you've never used essential oils on your skin, mix a little bit of castor oil and the essential oils, always, always with a carrier oil, never on their own, ever. And don't mix them with like your conditioner and think it's gonna work or your shampoo, never, always with a carrier oil. That's very important. So okay. do a little test to make sure that it doesn't irritate you. If you've never used essential oils before, or if this is the first time using it on your scalp, you might wanna do a little patch test because you know it, it could be a sensitive area. Do the nape of your neck and maybe the temple area and uh, see if you have any irritation. If not, move forward. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the castor oil and I just eyeball it, but you can take about two tablespoons. I'm going to just pour 
it in the bowl and it measures about two tablespoons. Now castor oil is very thick. So um, if you need to thin it out, use a little bit of macadamia nut oil if you want to use the castor oil. Castor oil, a lot of people use to get their eyebrows and their eyelashes to grow. It does nothing for my eyebrows or eyelashes. And let's keep but in I mind, we all know genetics. I genetically am blessed with a lot of hair, but just because I've been given those good genes doesn't mean that my hair is always going to look its best if I, if I ignore it. And also, did you know, here's a little tip, genetics also plays a very big uh, part of when you start to go gray. My mother went gray very early, and I believe my father did. He died young, but I believe he was already gray in his 50s. So um, that does play a big part. My mom went when she was really early, and I think I was in my late 20s when I started seeing all my grays. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rosemary oil and we're just going to take three drops to four. So one, two, three, four, no more than that. Next okay, is the geranium and I'm gonna do three drops of geranium. One, two, and three drops of the geranium and that is it my friends now and I'm now i'm going to take my brush and i'm going to really incorporate those essential oils into the castor oil just give it a good mixing you want to make sure that they are distributed throughout the oil and it smells nice too my friends okay, okay. so now what we're going to do is we're going to apply it okay, so i'm going so to we, my hair is, oh, I wanted to point out this right here. If you see this, <laughs> we bought a blood pressure cup and um, I said to Lou, oh, take my blood pressure. So he put it on. It was so tight when it went up and it, it does it three times. This morning he said to me, what happened to your arm? He goes, oh, that's from the blood pr pressure cup. And um, I go, that's what I get for having a doctor instead of a nurse do my blood pressure. <laughs> Anyway, okay, okay. so now you want to just make sure that your hair doesn't have any snarls or tangles in it. And this is the one I like to use. This is the Olivia Garden, and this is the Detangler Pro. And all I do is I take the end of my hair, and I just start at the bottom, and I go ahead and just make sure that it's nice and smooth. No snarls. You don't want to start up here and brush down, because if you hear your hair going through, that means you're snapping and pulling. Okay, so just... Go from the bottom down. Okay, so hair is smoothed out. So now I'm just going to pull it apart and you can see I still have all my grays. It's really good to do this just before you color because then your hair is in, it's, it's really treated well. You've got all the buildup off your hair and your scalp and I think your color will perform better for you the day you have your hair colored. You can do this a couple of days before you color it, just if you're not gonna put a lot of product on it. I usually do this two days before a color, okay? So we're just going to take the castor oil now. Don't wear anything good while you're doing this. And it's in the brush hairs. It's a little sloppy, so stand over a sink. Unfortunately, I'm not at my sink, but I'm just going to separate it and I'm going to pounce it into the scalp back and forth a couple of times just on my scalp and then I'm going to go ahead and just part it and I'm just going to move through the scalp and that is it that's the application so you're going to go ahead and separate your hair all the way around and just tap it into the scalp I'd say about an inch and a half to an inch parting is fine because we're going to massage this in and the heat from your head is going to make it travel. So we don't need to over apply it. If you have an area that is really thinning, go ahead and give it a little extra boost. And I'm kind of just pouncing it in to the scalp, okay? And then we're just going to move right down and just keep going, my friends. So, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up my scalp now, and then I'll be back to show you the treatment I use on my strands. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, my so it is applied throughout my hair. And what I've done is there was some oil left in the bowl. So now I have it on my fingertips, and you're just going to put your fingertips through, and you're just going to start massaging. And what this will do is it will, one, distribute it throughout every single hair follicle on your head, 
and by massaging, you help to stimulate circulation and blood flow to the follicles. And I want you to spend about two to three minutes doing this. Just move through the scalp and just give it a really good workout, my friends, and your arms too. <laughs> and you're just using the balls of your fingertip and you're just working all the way through, distributing that castor oil and essential oils throughout the scalp. And like I said, this is a once a week, at least two times a month treatment, my friends. But if you are really trying to get your hair and scalp in the best shape you possibly can, once a week is perfect for this. So make it your cleaning day. We, we all do laundry, we all clean our house. We all, and if you're not cleaning your house, you even have more time to do this, my friends. If you're somebody I mean, who works seven days a week. I mean, I remember when I was young and single, I worked three jobs and I still found time to do this for myself. I it just, was in a different way. I didn't know about all these products when I was a, a younger girl. I took advantage of every single hair product there was. I just really have always enjoyed it, my friends. And here I am at 61 years old in November, wearing my hair really long. And I do have to say that my hair is the most complimented thing on me, outside of my glowing personality, of course. <laughs> but truly, I mean, you don't, it, it just really is. And I know that, you know, the genetics plays a big part of it. I could easily have fried hair if I chose to do nothing about it but wash it and dry it and just go. Okay, that so is that is it for the scalp. We are going to move on to the strands of the hair. Again, when I'm not on camera and I'm doing this, this takes, I mean, I'm done within 10, 15 minutes. I am absolutely done with the whole process. Hair is up and I'm already vacuuming or something, okay? So I'm just wiping my fingers off here. So now we are going to move on to the oil that I make up for my hair strands. Of course, if you don't want to use the oils, you can do this. You can just put a hair mask on now. And it's okay to put a hair mask on dry strands. I sometimes prefer it on dry strands because I think the dryness of my hair really sucks out the moisture from the mask. So if you don't want to get into the oil thing, continue on with the masks that I shared with you. They are really good masks. You can get really expensive all the way to very affordable. If you haven't seen my first video on hair, the question and answer, Go check it out. I talk about a lot of products in there. Okay, so what we're going to do, I already have some of the formula in here, but I'm just going to pour a little bit more in. So again, this is just an old mask jar by Jisoo or Gisu, whatever the name is. I'm going to start out with the coconut oil. And you can do about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup if you want to make your formula up and have it for a couple of, for the whole month. You can go ahead and do that. So a quarter cup to a half cup. I'm just going to eyeball it again. That's about a quarter cup that I put in there. And then all the other oils, about two to three tablespoons is plenty. So I just take the pump that this one comes in. Again, everything will be listed and linked below for you. I just go ahead. I got to this is my bad hand, my arthritis wrist, so it's hard for me. I take about, oh, four good pumps of the almond oil. You can't go wrong. It doesn't matter how much you put of each one. In the I formula, like coconut is the main carrier oil and then I put like I said about two or three tablespoons of all the other oils. So now I'm going to take the macadamia nut oil which comes in a dropper. This is one of my fa favorites of the oils. Comes in a dropper. I go one, two, and three. So about three full drops of the macadamia nut oil. And then I go in with my jojoba oil. I love this oil for body oil as well. It's, it's closest to our own oils. Really, really nice. One, two, three, about, about four pumps of the jojoba oil. And that is it. So we have the sweet almond, the jojoba, the coconut, and the macadamia nut oil. And then I'm just going to put the top back on, give them a squirrel to incorporate them. And this gets a little messy, my friends. You there can are two ways that you can apply. You can use a really large dropper, which you just go in and you will suck up the oil and then turn it upside down so it doesn't leak out on you. And then you just take your hair. I find it easier to just work with my hands, but some people aren't going to like to do that. And then you're just going to 
drip it throughout the strand and you want to just work that in to your strands and I make sure to go in between you want it on every single strand you want to go right up to where you applied that castor oil and start on the bare dry ends of your hair how I do this I take the dropper and I put it in the palms of my hand and then I just lightly swirl it and then I take my hands and I just really work it through my hair and it looks like I'm really yanking my hair I'm not but because you're putting oil on there's such a slip you're not doing any damage so we're just going to work that in until your hair looks wet and and really greasy and then I just take a little bit more the ends really pay attention to them they're the oldest on your head they really are so I just put some of that oil on there and again I'm just working it through if you feel you need a little bit more go right ahead work in sections to make sure you're getting under and in between my friends all right so that is what I do to my strands so I'm going to go ahead and finish applying this and I'll be right back all right friends all right. so I am back this is how your hair should look when you are done and you want to make sure that you really have saturated the ends of your hair if there's even a few dry pieces get in there with some oil because remember this is the oldest hair on your head and it most likely is going to be the driest also and if you're in need of a cut this is going to really make a difference I also wanted to say when you are doing the oil do not be afraid of a few strands that come out these are just strands of hair that are already loose in your head it's like a dog you shed and the hair doesn't come out all at once it sheds as they walk along and you find little dust bunnies or hair on your couch and wherever but this is it's hair that would have fallen out with a shampoo it's just the natural process this is all natural there's nothing to worry about here now if you're doing it and a whole clump comes out then you have an issue but this is absolutely normal it has to happen for new hair to grow so do not be afraid that you're seeing you know 10 to 20 maybe even 50 strands of hair when you do this it is just hair that is loose inside of your little mop okay okay and let me All just right. show you how much of the oil I actually use I could probably slap the rest of this on but there's that much oil but remember I started with oil already in there if I hadn't it probably I probably would have used all of the oil so from all the way to where I have oil all the way up you can see it's all the way and then my scalp is treated with the castor oil the rosemary and geranium okay so now you can't wear your hair down like this it's so greasy you can go ahead and use a tie in your hair but you're going to get oil on it so I just use clips for this and what I do is I just take my hair now I pull it all back and I just bring it up on top of my head and then I will just take it in my hand and twist it around and twist it up <clears throat> and then I just take these and I clip them open and you may have a little problem gripping these because your hand is so greasy but you just want to make sure you really secure that in so I just use two and clip it where my hair is in the back and that is it now if you want to if you don't have all day and you just want to leave this on for like an hour throw a cap on so that the heat of your head really helps the oil work what I do for my ageless beauties I come on YouTube looking like a hot mess <laughs> but anyway I just will put a cap on and sometimes I do it when I'm cleaning because if I bend over and my bun hits the wall then there's a big grease spot on the wall so now I'm having to clean more things so sometimes I just put my cap on and I go about my business and if the doorbell rings well they've got a shot coming to them don't they so but you can put on a cap or not now the longer you have the better okay now this one here I do on Mondays my cleaning day because this oil is really on my hair thick so to go to bed like this it would get all over the place so we don't want to do it before we go to bed you can you know like I said rush it along with the cap 
but ideally it would be good for a couple of hours, my friends, okay? So, now so after this has been on my hair for the length of time that it's going to be on my hair, which is probably at least six hours, okay? Maybe not eight, but at least six hours. Now I'm going to take my shower and wash my hair. I do wash my hair twice, but because you have oil on your hair and it's already absorbed all the nutrients, you don't need to worry about shampooing your hair twice, okay? But you need to lift this oil out. So I will shampoo twice with a very good shampoo, a hydrating shampoo, whatever shampoo you use, just make it, make sure that it doesn't have a lot of sulfates or detergents in it because then you are just drying your hair out more. So we so want to continue on with good products. So buy the best your money can. And let me tell you something, you can go into Walmart, Target, CVS, and find really good shampoo and conditioners that are sulfate free and are really good for the hair. The hair food line, I love their mask. I did try one of their shampoos and it was too drying for me. So I needed a more moisturizing. I don't think I bought the um, hydrating moisturizing one. It was the one that Costco carries. It, it wasn't really good for my hair. So I, I need, I need hydrating and moisturizing shampoos. You may not, but just keep that in mind. You can find affordable shampoo and conditioners that are really going to be better for your scalp and your hair. All right. So I go in and I wash really well twice. So what I do is I just put my shampoo on the first, massage it through, really work it up and then rinse it out and, and then move in with more shampoo and just work it up and let it sit for a minute and rinse it out. Rinsing it out with warm water, following it up with my conditioner so that it's detangled because conditioner is very important for me because I don't want tangles because tangles create more breakage. So we don't want tangles. So I put a light conditioner. You don't even need to use it on your scalp. If you're somebody who is worried that the weight of the conditioner is going to weigh your hair down, just use it on the ends. If you're somebody who gets a lot of tangles, okay? And we don't so then what I do after this is I put my conditioner on, then I will rinse the conditioner out with warm water, and then I finish up with my cold blast because that really helps the layers. They just lay smoother for me when I do the cold blast. So my okay. friends, that is what I do once a week for scalp health and really saturating my strands with good nutrients using oils. Remember, you don't have to use all of them. You know, I'm a little crazy, but they do really work well together. So you can buy small bottles of them. You don't even have to buy a big. Now, if you're someone who can't really find these oils or afford them, use olive oil in your kitchen and just saturate the strands and leave it on like I did. Okay. You can also warm the oils up and just make sure that the temperature is good for your skin. Once you start applying, you don't want to go in with super hot oil and burn yourself. So be careful if you do warm the oil up, but I've done it myself. I love to put warm oils on my hair. All right, my friends. So that is it for the actual treatment part. I don't, let me see if there was anything else I wanted to talk to you about. I put a little note down here because sometimes I lose my way. Okay. I am. All right. So. Once a week oil treatment, pre-treatment. If you haven't watched my question and answer video, go and watch it now. I'll link it below for you. Pre-treating your hair before you shampoo is a bonus, okay? Uh, mask your hair once a week, even doing this. You want to pick a day that you can throw a mask on at least once a week or do a couple of quick treatment masks every time you wash your hair. It will help your hair improve, my friends. Massage your head. Even if it's just watching TV at night, sit there and massage your head. It will help blood flow. Circulation around those hair follicles is a good thing, my friends. Using the clarifying shampoo only on your scalp if you have dry, flaky, or you use a lot of products on your scalp, Getting that off will really help your hair follicles. Everything needs to breathe, my friends, everything. Even your skin, your follicles, your pore, everything needs to breathe, my friends. <laughs> All right, so you wanna make sure you're taking care of that. And then if you have dandruff or sensitive skin, or you think you have dandruff, but the shampoos aren't working and you have sensitive skin, 
give the aloe vera a try. And so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this again. I know I'm going to get people to say, who has time for this? If you don't make time for yourself, and this can be done in a matter of 20 minutes. I mean, you could put it on for 10 minutes, you can take five to 10 minutes to put it on and only leave it on for 10 minutes. At least you're doing something. But make you a priority, my friends. Make you a priority. And remember, my friends, you do not have to do this. I'm just sharing with you things that I think have helped my hair stay healthy through menopause. These are the things that I do religiously. These are the things that I do on my cleaning day. I don't take other, I don't take time out of my other days to do any of this. This is on my cleaning day. And then what I do in the shower and then before I go to bed. It's just a matter of minutes to dedicate to yourself, my friends. You are worth every moment you can give to yourself. Truly you are. Let me All know right. in the comments if you're gonna give this a try and mark on your calendar when you started it after doing this a couple of months religiously, take a look at your hair. Really take a look at your hair. Take a picture of your hair before you start and then look at your hair. And every time you go to the hairdresser, pay attention to what they say to you. Are they saying, boy, your hair's really looking great. My girl says it to me all the time, all the time. She's like, oh my goodness, your hair is just, it's like getting thicker. You know, she just really, and I'm not giving you any BS, my friends. So let me know in a couple of months after you've been doing this consistently, if it is helping you at all. All right, my friends, and let us know in the comments if you've been using castor oil on your scalp and does it help you with hair growth. There are so many things you can do outside of the chemical. There are tons of shampoos, conditioners, serums, but a lot of people don't wanna get into those. Their scalps are too sensitive for it. So I chose to come on camera and show you the natural route. Okay? All right, my friends, so that is it for today's video. I hear my washing machine, my vacuum cleaner, my dust rags, my broom, everything's calling me. My bathrooms, they need scrubbing, everything. So I'm gonna get going. If you haven't already subscribed, hit Please. that subscribe button. Right next to it is a bell that notifies you of all the videos that I am putting up. Until the next time, my friends, go out in the world and be happy, healthy, beautiful, and most of all, my friends, lovable. I love you all. Bisous.